I want you to be trained the right way. You know, you don't just come and wait for somebody else to do everything. Maybe God's stirring cooking something inside of you that he wants somebody else to know about. Are you still here? Yeah, this is, this is what true worship is. Brother Milton, we really appreciate you. You're, you're, you're an exceptional man. You are. He is, he is. This guy's something else. Yeah, yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Well, God does have a word for us today. He does have a word. Yeah. See, that's all my job. See, my job is just to bring you a word. That's, that's what my part is. But other than that, I'm here just like everybody else, trying to get something. Ha! Ha ha! Yeah. I come, to, ha, I come to get something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dear God. This God. See, I like liberty. I don't, I tell you, I could have to give two cents for a bunch of stiff collared church folks. I could give two cents for it. You know, everybody walking stiff. church worship is we come to worship God hallelujah and the worship song you got to get ugly to do that you're trying to keep your play keep your hair in place and, and keep your mascara from running and all of that forget the mascara let it run Pick your eyebrows up on the way out. If you want, don't make no difference. <laughs> worship time, brother. Tell them, brother Gamble, it's worship time. Hallelujah. They ain't worship till they lose the wind anyhow. <laughs> if you see a loser wig and don't stop jumping, don't worry about it. She is in the spirit. <laughs> she, she. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God has a word for his people. God has a word for the hour. Message for the hour. God always, God, you don't know how much God loves you. God loves his people. And God loves you so much that he will stick by you through thick and thin. And won't, he won't leave you. And he won't let nobody else mess with you either. I found that out. God won't let them back go on, won't let them, he won't, he'll, he'll stick by you and he won't allow nobody else to bother you. Right down to the T. Ephesians chapter three, verses 13 and 14. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Your and my family, your family extends beyond your doorstep. Your family extends beyond the earth. You've got family in heaven. Amen. Now, the, the more you know about God, the more you'll know about yourself, and it's going to draw you nearer to him, and it's going to develop a richer relationship with him, the more you know. And you know things by the word of God. And so, God is a family God. He has a family. Remember when Jesus was raised from the dead, he said, go tell my brethren that I ascend to my God and your God, my father and your father. Remember how he emphasized that? I'm, now your father and my father is the same father. We're of the same family. Now children of God, we need to understand. Now you know when it comes to family, you know that's close. That's, that's close. Don't, don't, don't mess with my family. You, you won't, don't know you get in trouble. Tell you that right now. Well, well, we are the family of God. And, and family is, it means something. Now, we, God, he says that he is, he talks about the, 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 the totality of God's family. From whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. We are named after Jesus. We are in Christ. And so therefore I bow my knees 
to the God, to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Now, over in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20, he, he talks about the, the, go ahead and put it on the board there, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20, he talks about in the NLT, put it up in the NLT, where our citizenship is. But we are citizens of what? Heaven. Now, now stop, stop, stop right there. Do you know what our, you know what a great problem that we have and don't admit it? Most of us won't admit it. Now, I'm going to be, I'm, it's going to hit you in the, it's going to hit you in the belly. I'm going to tell you that right now. But one of the Christians' biggest problems, and most of us won't admit it, is we don't believe God. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what our problems are. Because if you believed God, you'd be, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't nothing, nothing would be wrong with you. you. You'd be on top of it all the time. If you believe God. But, but, but the trade, you, you, you just got to believe it. Put a, please put the scripture back up there, please. I want to, I want to. But we are citizens of heaven. You see that? We are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. And we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. We are waiting for him to come and pick us up. Yes, sir. Jesus, when the Bible said when Jesus left, he said, I'm going away and I'm going to come back and I'm going to receive you unto myself. But that's where I'm your citizen. So if my citizenship is in heaven, then, then I don't have any problems. Then I, I'm, I don't have any problems. I have, I have access to all that heaven is, and, and I'm totally secured in him. And so therefore, fear can, can, can't touch me. Fear cannot touch me. But, but I have to know that. I, I, I have to know that. Now, let's talk about the, 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 the reason. Let's talk about why. Why, do, why is it that we don't excel well, well we, we, have to, we have to lose this consciousness. We have to lose this natural consciousness that we have of things around us and put our mind where they should be. Now, put, go, look at, look at, look at um, Colossians chapter 1. No, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And let's consider, if you will, the second verse. Colossians 3, consider with me the second verse. Set your mind where? Not on. Now, this, is, that's, not a, this, that's not a complicated word in that statement. I mean, there's all, all three great words. Set your mind on things above. Not, now, where is our citizenship? If... <laughs> If we spent our time thinking about the things of heaven, you wouldn't have time to be grabbing grab about what's on earth. Amen. Now, really, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you where our problems are. It's because we haven't believed that our citizenship is in heaven, and we got more confidence in the earth than you got that in heaven. Set your mind where, not on things on the earth. Set your mind. In other words, if, if, if your mind is consumed by the earth, there is never going to be any victory for you because there is no victory down here. People, please understand that. There is no victory down here. But here's, here's, the, here's the, the wonders of this. When we set our minds on things above and begin to consider the things of God, it elevates us to a level of understanding that goes beyond human reasoning. And then what I'm able to do, I don't see, I don't really have to set my mind on things on the earth. I just walk through this thing totally victorious because I'm walking through it on heaven's understanding and wisdom and knowledge and it's which far supersedes the knowledge of the earth. That's why he said don't look at the earth. In fact, one place in the scripture, God said, don't even look at what you see. Now, 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 
this kind of, now, I know I'm going out there, but that's okay. You, you can't stick around the bank all the time. The little fish is not done. Big fish is out in the water. <laughs> to get you out there where some big fish are. But you would say, no, we, we, want, we want to move into the depths and the depths of the things. Because, see, that's, one, that's where defeat is. Defeat is on the earth. Defeat. Dear God, God didn't save you for you to be defeated. God saved you to be walk, to walk in victory all the time. And you're going you're gonna to have to develop. You're going to have to develop and grow. You're going to have to develop. You're going to have to de develop and grow. But, but you got, you got to move into this. You've got you to gotta see God. You've got to see God. You've got to want this. You've got to want more than you have. I'm not content. I'm not content. I want, I want, I want, I, I want more. I want to draw nearer. I, I, I want more of this. I want more of this. And so, so God said, the way this is, you're developing, you're growing, just to get your mind, start beginning to consider the things of God. Now, in order to set your mind on things above, you've got to know about the things above. Mm -hmm. You've got to know about the things above from the word of God. Amen. That's how you're going to know about the things above. When God, God began to teach me some things, and I, I want to share some of that with you today. He began to teach me some things about how the, how the devil messed with our minds. Turn on to 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And, and, and God began to talk to me about that. And I'm like, oh, dear God, this is good. I need this. I need this. I need this. Now, defeat begins in your mind. Defeat begins in your mind. Watch this. Flip the coin over. Victory begins in your mind. It's just in the mind. And I'm going to show you something because God began to teach. He began to teach me this. Because I thought, I thought, I thought, dear God, I'm tired of looking at the earth. I've seen this. So I think I just look at heaven. That's where my citizenship is. Yeah. That's, where my, you know, that's where my voting rights are. Yes, sir. Yes. In heaven. My citizenship is in heaven. So he says, set your mind on things above. So see, I'm, see, that's what we call going home. Mm. We talk about going home. You know, when you're going home, you're going where you, you're going, going where you belong. I remember when I was, uh, I remember when they took me from home years ago and took me away from home and took me to Europe and I was a little, just a kid. And I, and I was waiting for the day to go home. I wanted to go home. I wasn't going, but I wanted to go. But my point, the point I'm making, the day I came for me to go home. But where am I going? I'm going where, am I, going where I can vote. I'm going where my citizenship is. And it's the same thing that we talk about, you know, people talk on the earth, talking about going home. Home is where your, where your citizenship is. Home is where you've been registered. That's right. That's right. Are you still listening? Yes, sir. Heaven. My citizenship is in heaven. Mm -hmm. that's, 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 that's home. So this world is not my home. So why should I get bent out of shape about this thing? This is not my home. In fact, we used to sing a song, I'm just passing through. Yeah. To the angels beckoning me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. But, 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 I, but what I want to tell you, but, you, but there's a job for you to do while you're here, and there's some things that God did, that you've been called to do. But so, so in order for you to effectively do that, I got to show you some, some things on that you're going to have to learn in reference to being, to managing that mind, because that's where, you, that's where the defeat is. The devil plugs into your mind, and he get that mind all twisted up, and that's where he keep you in a tailspin all the time. And you're just, you're just kind of like a dog chasing his tail. But I can get you out of that. I can get you out of that. I'm going to get you out of that. I'm going to get you into a place of victory. How many of you want to live in victory? I get you in a place of victory and knowing you in victory. Now, victory is not in your feelings, so don't, don't even think about that. Forget that. Forget that. And we're not talking about the feelings. Victory, I'm not talking about your feelings. I'm talking about getting you in victory totally, period. Second so, Corinthians chapter number... 10, I said, what did I say, chapter 10? 2 Corinthians 10, and uh, let's look at verse number 4. I'll find it in a minute. 10, put it on the board. Second Corinthians 10 and verses number 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. The weapons of our warfare are not calm. Now, here again, you understand, you got to understand that you're at war. You, you are at war. We are at war. And, and one of the, one of the, one of the uh, easiest ways to be defeated is to think you're somewhere that you're not. If you think that you're in peacetime, that's what keeps people twisted and stewed up because they think everything's supposed to be smooth. But you're not at, you're not, you know, we're not in, this is not peace. We're not in peacetime. We're at war. No, literally. You, you are, you're literally at war. And, and if you don't understand that you're at war and you don't understand the, 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 the weaponry that we have access to and how we are to utilize them, you'll be defeated. Now, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Strongholds. Strongholds, that's where your enemy resides, and that's where he is plotting against you at, in strongholds. He has strongholds. He has places in his strongholds. He is plotting to take you out. Now, what did Jesus tell us about our enemy in John 10.10? 10? He'll kill you. Now, now, see, the problem is that, see, I don't know if we believe that. See, we think, see, when the devil comes to kill you, we think it's something else. We think we just got a bad, we think we just got a headache. No, that's not a headache. That's the devil coming to kill you. And he'll use that, of course. And anything else he can get, he'll use a headache, toe ache, anything else kind of ache. Because his intent is to kill you. But if you don't understand things in this light, you're going to always be defeated. Please hear me, child of God. If you don't understand opposition as your enemy approaching you or coming at you for destructive purposes, if you don't understand that, then you're going to miss it. Yes, Anything that's wrong, that moves you out of your place of peace and comfort, on, is the adversary coming at you for destruction or purposes. You better understand that. Now, how is it that the devil get away with so much? He gets away with it because we misunderstand warfare. Mm -hmm. We do not understand warfare. We do not understand spiritual warfare. So you got to understand, when you got born again, you are no longer just a natural man. Amen. And you are now a spirit being. And you have, a, you, you, the real you are a spirit being. You are just living in this natural body. But you have an adversary that he is a spirit as well. And if you don't understand spiritual warfare, your adversary will destroy you and he'll take you out. He will defeat you if you don't understand that. And so, listen, go back to this. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. What do you mean carnal? They are not natural weapons. They're not, it's not a hatchet. It's not a pistol. It's not a, you know, knife. They're not, they're not natural weapons. Now, now, what the devil will do, the devil will come at you in the, with, with, with spiritual things and then make you use natural weapons to try to fight it with. He'll help somebody to do something or say something to you and you'll go slap them. And then the devil just back off and go and get somebody else because you'll be there for the next two days. <laughs> no, really, that's what he does. He'll throw stuff up and make and you think, and because you are not spiritual minded, you will think it's the person or it's the circumstances or whatever. And then you'll go, be, you'll go focus all your attention on the circumstances and the devil go on to somebody else because you'll be there. You, he, he, you're stuck there for the next whatever. That's how he, that's how he messes you up. Because, see, listen to me very carefully. The devil don't have enough help. He doesn't. He does not have enough help. He, he only have some. He have some. He have some help. But he doesn't have enough. He doesn't have an arsenal like God does. 
So he can't assign somebody to you and leave them there all the time. Otherwise, everybody else go free. So in order for him to get around, he just come and he'll slap you upside the head and leave, and you'll fight yourself for the next two days till he get back to give you something else. I bet you right now, I bet you right now, I bet you right now, you, I, know you, I know something's on your mind right now. I bet you don't remember what was on your mind last week this time. It was something that's totally different. The devil is here. I'm trying to show you some things about, about you so to help you get into victory. No. So, but once you understand that every obstacle, every opposition is from the adversary yeah. and you respond to it in that manner, then you will gain the control over the matter and you will dominate it and you'll walk in victory all the time. Yes, when you understand it. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at this again. The weapons of our warfare are not common, but are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Strongholds are where, any, where, the, where the adversary plot against you at. You can pull them down. Now, how do you do that? Now, this, act, this verse is really uh, uh, explains it, it's its own commentary right there in verses 4 and 5. Verse 5 is the commentary for verse 4. Now, verse 4 says, The weapons of our warfare, they are not calm, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Now watch this. Verse 5 says, tells you how to do it. Casting down arguments. Now, I, I like the King James, the, 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 original, the traditional King James says, casting down imaginations. I can identify with imaginations. Well, uh, uh, say argument is the same thing as another word to translate, to translate the term. Arguments is good because wherever there's arguments, you know, there ain't no peace there. You can sure, be sure of that. It's just devils. There's no doubt about it. But casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now remember why I say defeat, where your defeat started? Defeat starts in the mind or victory starts in the mind. Now, let's talk about this for a minute because then you're going to get blessed. The battleground for every believer is the mind. Amen. The battleground is the mind. That's where, the, that's, where, that's, where the, that's where blood, guts, and everything is. The battlefield is the mind. That's where the devil attacks you. So you've got to understand the devil is not a man walking around. Now, the reason that we are, have our problems with people is because the devil gets in people's minds and then calls them to react in the natural. And then when, you know, when people, when people do something to you, th the thoughts already been in their mind and they're reacting to what's always in their mind when they, when they call you something. Th th they're reacting to that. Now, if, if, if when, you, when we miss it, it's when we mistaken we mistaken people, and we think that the person is the problem. Listen to me very carefully. This will bless you. Whatever, you, whatever is up that you're dealing with, it's never the person. It's not the person. And, and most of us have, we call and consider ourselves to have issues with people. Listen to me. It's never, it's not the person. It is not the person. It's not the person. If you can train yourself to believe and understand that, you will learn to love people like you've never learned to love them before. Yes, sir. It's never the people. Yes, sir. When any per whatever any person does, all they're doing is reacting to what comes out of their mind. Mm -hmm. And the devil has contaminated the mind. Right. And, he, and if people don't have the word of God mm -hmm. working in them, then the only thing they can do is follow whatever the mind tells them to do. And they'll do that. And that's how, that's how people stay there. That's how people end up getting depressed. You know, the devil, he, he works in people and people, people go into what they call depression. Uh -huh. You know why they do that? Because the devil is bombarding their mind. And, they, and they, you know, they just, it, just, it just gets, he just beat, just working in their mind. The, the battle is in the mind. But they're, they're in a fight, but they don't know how to fight. They, they, they trying to make it, they trying to turn it to something real. 
It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. That's why the Bible said it's imagination, casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. Now, quickly look at, look at Ephesians chapter number 6. And hold your place there because we're going to look at two scriptures. Today, you're going to learn, I want you to really, you're going to learn something here today. Amen. Couple this with Ephesians chapter number 6. And let's pick up at the 13th verse. But we're going to do, I'm going to read this from the, from the NLT. Ephesians 6, 13. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Amen. Now, you see all this military talk? Yes, sir. Soldiers understand all of this. After what? The what? The battle. After the battle, you will still be standing firm. Mm -hmm. See, that's what I call living on top of it every day. Why? Because you understand warfare, you understand spiritual warfare, and you follow the procedures that God has laid out in his word. And if you don't do that, you're going to miss it, and you're going to stay in a tailspin, and you're going to stay all messed up, you're going to be just, you know, a smile will be seldom on your face. Because the devil will see to it that one don't show up. Because he's going to have you in such a tailspin all the time. But now, 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 I told you, we gotta work, I got to work these two scriptures here together. Now, now, the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God because they, they work. Now, casting down imaginations, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Every negative thought that comes in your mind is always against the peace of God that he has already provided for you. Now, remember what Jesus said? My peace, I do what? Give to you. So there is no legitimate reason for all of the children not to be walking in peace all the time because Jesus gave it to us. And not only that, he is the prince of peace. If you, if you run out, they can go and get some more. And he's right there. You don't have to go look for him because he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. You got to know all of this. So, 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 so therefore, I have a right. Now, listen to me real carefully. I have a right to live in perfect peace every day, all day. I have a right to do that. And I can do that when I learn how. Because Jesus has already given it to me and he's not, he didn't give it to me and snatch it back. He has given it unto me. And I have a right to walk in peace. Now, you're going to have to forget the, 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 all that world language. You've got to throw it away. You know all that up and down language? You know, win some and lose some? All that stuff, got you've got to let it go. Because I don't win some and lose some. I win them all. I'm not for up and down. I'm up all the time. I stay up. My purpose. I, I, I think up. I live up. I sleep up. I walk up. I, I, I'm up all the time. I never. I'm not ever down. Now, now, what is the spirit of faith? The spirit of faith is this. I believe, therefore I. The first thing, I, see, I'm not going to even say. I'm, 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 I'm not even going to say I'm down. I'm, never, I'm not even going to speak. I'm not even going to say anything that, that's defeatable. Because I believe, therefore I speak. That's faith. See, see, come on. See, most of us have learned these things, but we don't, we don't practice them. We, we have learned them, and then we got smart and, fi and figured, it, you know, we weren't, we weren't being reasonable. You learn too much from the world. But there is a place for you and I to live at perfect peace every day, all day. Amen. Now, people will fuss with you. Well, everybody has a... Not me! I refuse. I don't have to. 
Because when Jesus gave me his peace, he never said, son, he didn't say, Owen, I'm going to give you this peace. But now, son, it's going to be some days when you just can't walk in it. He didn't tell me that. Jesus never told me that. But we have listened to the world and we've been so trained by the world that we have this strange idea. Dear God, you got to be, you got to have some kick around sometime. No, you don't. See, you got to rid yourself of all that kind of thing. I'm trying to show you why people are defeated. See, see, defeat. See, once you have been subjected to the strongholds of the devil, he will suck you in and then he'll destroy you totally and completely. He'll take everything else from you. And then the, his, his master weapon is the fear. It's fear. He saves that one. Because, and he doesn't have to implement it, push it on you, because the defeat in the other areas is going to release the fear. Yes. The defeat in all the other areas is going to release the fear. Mm -hmm. And then fear comes in, and you can't do anything with that. That's a spirit itself. And it's a destructive spirit. And that's where people are. Now, Let's talk about this because God's going to set you free from this today. The weapons of our warfare are not calm, but they are mighty through God. Now watch this. Watch this. Let's, let's get, I, want, I want to get real practical with you because that's how you, you got to get practical. Otherwise, you're going to miss it. When you wake up in the morning, how many wake up in the morning with beautiful thoughts? All beautiful thoughts. Just jump out of bed singing and shouting. <laughs> no. No. You wake up in the morning and you got all kind of missiles coming at your mind. Thoughts. Ever wonder why they have, why they have to be so negative? And defeat, it's the, it's defeating negative thoughts that are bombarding your mind. When you wake up, the devil's standing, he waves you, he waves your eyes open. And the thought dots start coming. The fiery dots are coming. You got to do this. You got to do this. Remember this. Remember this. And, it's going to, and that ain't going to work. And that ain't going to work. And all of this. And it's coming at your mind. What are you going to do with it? Well, God said, here's what he said. First thing you do is you cast it down. Casting down imaginations. See, notice what he calls them. He calls those thoughts imagination. They are not real. You know, the, 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 the thought, you know, you know, you got, you got a doctor's appointment this morning, and dear God, hmm, I know that report's going to be bad. That's not real. That's an imagination. That's an imagination. How you, you the boss called you, got a, you got an appointment with the boss, they call you, they, talk, they call you up, and they told you, he wants to meet you, and he wants to meet you in his office at nine o'clock, and when you go there, and they're going to fire you. That's not real. It's an imagination. All of these thoughts, they are imagination. They're not real, and they come from hell. All these defeating thoughts are imaginations. They come from hell. Now watch this. The more you give in to them, the fatter they get until you get a lump in your stomach. Now you got a lump in your stomach because uh, that, that thought have beat you, have beat you. You fed it. You, you, you fed it with attention instead of doing what God said. Don't, God said, it's, it's not real. It's a lie. Cast it down. Cast it down. Cast it down. Cast it down. It's a lie. It's a lie. Now, how do you cast thoughts like that down? You cast them down, that's why you have to have the word of God in that inside of your heart. Amen. See, watch this. Okay, let's just take it. Let's just pull one out of the air. Typical. Well, you got a you got a, you got a, you got a, you got, a, you, got a, you got an appointment with the boss this morning, and I know they're gonna fire you because you last week you let this thing happen last week and they didn't forget that and they're gonna fire you for sure. Well, how can I cast that down with the word of God? Easy, 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 if you got the word in your heart. It doesn't matter if they fire me or not. My God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. 
God has kept me, I'm, I'm all, I, God has kept me until now, and God did not bring me to right now for me to fail and go to the poorhouse. You cast down the imagination with the word of God. Yeah. And, and, but, but if you just sit there and try to figure out how the man not going to fire you, it ain't going to work. Because now you're arguing with it. Uh -huh. That's why uh, the new, new King James is casting down arguments. Right. Now you're sitting there arguing with the devil. But, 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 but this ain't going to happen. But this ain't going to happen. The devil said, this is going to happen. You say, no, but this ain't going to happen. And you argue with the devil. That's why God said, cast down arguments. This, the God calls them arguments. The devil is throwing these thoughts in your mind. Now watch this. Here's what, here's how, here's what the devil, and you better know, you better know this is the truth. Once the devil gets you really stewed up over a good one, he is gone. You're going to think about it by yourself. You don't need him. You, you don't need the devil anymore. No. He didn't already come there and socked it to you yeah. and got you going with it and he gone to somebody else and left you and you thinking about it all by yourself. No. In fact, you're going to call somebody else up and tell them about it. <laughs> you know, I got the boss. I got to be with the boss this morning and I know they're going to find me. You know, what, what do you think? Oh boy, don't do, see, see what I mean? I'm that's, the way, that's the way we stay stewed up all the time. But don't receive it is. Uh, it's a lie. And, if you haven't, it's, and, it, and he always show you the worst scenario. He always does that. He always show you the worst scenario. You know what I mean? You, 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 you got an appointment with your doctor. You're going to die show for, for sure. <laughs> he's not going to tell you. Well, he's not going to tell you. It's a good report. You're going to live. No, no, he's going to tell you that. He's going to give you. The, you're going to have the negative side of it. But it's a lie. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's why God put that in there. Casting down. Now, what happens? What happens? See, that intensifies. See, it, it's just, it don't stop with just the situation. Mm -hmm. Once you start arguing with the thought that the devil brought to you, if you start arguing with the devil, I can assure you, I can guarantee you, I can tell you right up front, I don't care who you are, I don't care if you have a PhD hanging on the wall. If you are arguing with the devil, he going to win. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, I, know, I don't have to, that's, that's not even up for the discussion. If you start arguing with the devil, he is going to win. Because that's, that's, that's the way he is. You can't out, you, you can't out argue him. See the devil, see watch this. <laughs> We see it all through the scriptures. Jesus is going to rise from the dead. The devil said, no, he's not. Jesus got up from the dead. He said, well, they stole the body. There's no end to him. You better understand that. And you, there's, no, there's going to be no end to you either. But, but here's, what, here's what I'm trying to tell you. When you hear the devil in your mind, and you start, if, if you don't combat him with the word of God, then you're going to lose, and not only that, but then as you lose, then the, op the door is going to be open for the big one to come out the back room. Come on, come on. The big one is fear. That's, right. Amen. Yeah. that's the one that's laying back in the back room. Yeah. That's the big one that's laying back in the back room. And when you lose the argument with the devil, and you will, if you don't put the word of God on it, then out comes fear, and it's over. Now everything is messed up. Now your stomach's turning over. Every, everything, every, everything, every, 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 everything, everything. Fear. If you, if, you, if, you, if you Google the effects of fear, and you'll find out exactly what I'm talking about. Fear will put you in a grave. It'll stop your heart. Fear will kill you dead. Depending upon the magnitude of it, it'll kill you dead. And then the devil, then once he get it, and he get it going, then he, he'll defeat you. I'm talking about, I'm, right, people, I'm talking about a good, what would you call a good Christian Amen. can be destroyed just that way. Fear. And God told us very clear, fear is torment. Amen. Fear is torment. Now, these are the strategies of the adversary, and God would have us to understand 
the strategies of the adversary. And so you have to learn and, and, and not play into his game. Number one, now, now when God talked to us about prayer and the word, it's not, God is not telling you to read his word just so you can just say, I, I got the word, I got the word. No, no, better pick up last week's, Wednesday's and Thursday's message. The, 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 you, you, you need the word of God so you can do what the word says. Amen. You got to do this word. You got to do this. You just can't have it in your heart. You got you to be able to know when the devil brought the thoughts that come into your mind. See, I guarantee you right now, everybody in this room got enough word in them to defeat every devil thought that come into your mind. Amen. If you'll do it. And the, and, the, the, and the level of your defeating the devil is going to be determined on how much of the word you believe. Yes, for an example, dear, when it comes to believing God for your person, all you got to do is you say you believe the Bible. How many believe the Bible? Why do you think I read this 91st Psalm to you all the time? Why do, you, do you think I just, he just likes to read that? I'm reading this for you Amen. and for me. I don't see what I feed. I, I eat the same food I feed. Yes, sir, I eat first. Dear God, I eat first. But I read that so that you can believe it. Yes. Because this, the 91st Psalm is a fear killer. Mm -hmm. And God knows it. That's why he put it in there. Yes, sir. The 91st Psalm is a fear killer. Yes, yes. Yes. It, 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 it bashes fear. But you got to believe it, and you got to take it, and you've got to you've got to stand, you've got to hold up that shield. That's that's called, you know, the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. See, people, this is this is battle talk we're talking here. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. Take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's going to that's going to cause you to to to, to stand. To stand, to stand. There is no fear in God's word. So you use the word of God to drive out fear. You use the word of God. Now, when you understand the devices of the adversary, it's not enough just to understand the devices of the adversary. But you have to use the word of God to defeat the devices. Right. See, warfare is just like it says. It's, war, war is messy. I, I'm not going to sit up there and tell you, well, it's just a piece of cake. War is messy. Yes, sir. And all kind of mess going on at one time. Mm -hmm. You've got to learn how to defeat, understand, the, you've got to understand your enemy. If you don't understand your enemy, he, he'll take you out because you don't understand what he's doing. You got to know him. I even, even, even this, is, this is true in the sports world. You watch athletes, particularly boxing, or, or, or ball players as well, they, they, will, they will study their opponents to find out what their great moves are so they can come up with a defense against them. They know them. Well, you're going to have to know what you're going to have to understand that your, 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 understand your, your enemy, your adversary. And God teaches us his strategies in the word. But you got to, you got to get in there. You're the one got to get in there and learn that. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 says, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We're not ignorant of Satan's devices. We know, that's what I'm telling you right now. Oppositions, it, they come against you when you are fighting with people. Stop fighting people. Amen. It's not people. You have an adversary. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. L let me show you how this works. All the things that Jesus has taught us, Paul writing to the church at Corinth, they was all taking one another to court and all that. And he said, why don't you just, and yes, it was interesting in a statement he said to them once. He said, why don't you just take wrong? Mm -hmm. See, when you develop your own character, there, a lot of the tricks of the devil won't even work on you. Because watch this. 
You may do something to me, but for the sake of my peace, I'll just say forget it. Amen. Now what you gonna do? You can't do nothing about it. It won't work. Because I understand what it is. Yeah. Paul says, he said, why don't you just take wrong? Then or whatever that that turning that cheek business that we having a problem with. We struggling with that one. They strike you on one cheek, what do you do? Uh, you don't make no rug out of me. You see what I mean? You you gotta grow some more. It doesn't it doesn't matter. It ain't about you. It's not about you. It doesn't matter. But see, here's my point. Here's the point in this. When someone say, in order for a devil to work, he has to receive the same thing that he dishes out. For an example, if the devil trying to bring, bring friction between you and I, so, so, so I, bam, I punch you. Well, in order for that to work, you got to push me back. So if you don't push me back, it won't work. So the devil got to go try something else. You understand how this works? No, no. So you got to develop to a point where I, I'm not moved. I can take wrong. Jesus did it all the time. This, the hanging on that tree, Jesus was not guilty. But he just hung there. Come on. So the guy threw trash on your lawn. You just throwing fits. Well, go just go pick it up and throw it in the garbage can and keep on going about your business. Amen. What? You can't do that, can you? I saw him throw that trash on my lawn. He gonna pay for that. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to show you. No, no, I'm trying to show you. These are the, this is the minor stuff that goes on all the time in our lives that keeps us in a tailspin all the time. When all you got to do is forget about it, so what? Amen. So someone does something, so what? Amen. So the guy charged you a nickel too much, so what? Go on home. Amen. And that nickel going to break you, you broke already. <laughs> no, come on, I'm telling you, it's a little thing like this that many times stew us up. Yeah. And we call it, I'm having my meal, I'm, I'm having, you're not going to, you know, give, give, walk on me. Mm. Who are you? But our own flesh keep us in bondage. You've got to be aware of Satan's devices. He's a trickster. He's going to keep you stewed up. So not only do you have to understand that the thoughts of the, the balance in the mind, you've got to understand the thing that you're coming, encountering on, ongoing every day. Because I have made up my mind, I'm going to walk in God's peace every day, all day. I have a right to. God gave me his peace and I'm going to walk it out. I'm going to live it out. Now, the word will always call you to walk in victory. Yeah. Now, even if Satan plots against you and you're walking in God's liberty, it won't work. See, 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 we... I think we, we spend too much time trying to protect ourselves and we don't allow God to do it because we don't have time. Satan's plotting against you won't work if you're walking in the light and I'm going to show it to you. Job chapter 5, verse 12. Job 5, 12. Let me show you what God would be working doing for you. When you've made a decision, when you've made a decision to walk in love and to walk in the light of God's word, watch what God is doing for you. He frustrates the devices of the crafter so that their hands cannot carry out their plans. You see that? that that's for you. God, God's working on your behalf. No, God is working on your behalf. God is working on your behalf. The, 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 those that are plotting against you, it won't work. But now wait a minute, watch this. Supposing you, you, you plotting back. You, 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 you ought to figure out how I'm going to get back at them. Do you think that verse is going to work for you? Do you think, you think that verse is going to work for you? 
No, you no no no. You try to figure out. Hmm 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 hmm. Oh, hmm. And you puffing and blowing and breathing. Do you think that verse can work for you? I'm trying to show you something, people. God has provided a place for you and I. Because number one, when you are in a tailspin, you are not in no position to fulfill your calling. You're in no position because you're always in a tailspin. Drummer all the time. And I'm sure, you, and I've, I've seen that. I've seen, dear God, just drama, 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 drama all the time. First one, they're like, like they're not happy unless some drama going on. And just yag, yag, mouth like a, ah. When are you fulfilling your calling? With a mouth like that? Come on, people. You see, listen to me, listen to me. When we learn how to walk out the calling that God has placed in us, when we learn how to walk in that love God talks about, and that's the key, that's the key, that's the first, and that's the key is to walk in love, walk in love. When you learn how to walk in love and seek to fulfill your purposing and calling, everything else, will be done for you. Now listen to me very carefully. This is, this is, this is, this is in a nutshell. Please, please receive this. One of the most popular scriptures, and most of you can quote it. Matthew 6, 33. That works in more things than you think. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things be added to you. When you get up in the morning and you worship God and you honor him with all your heart and you say, God, what is it that you have me to do today? Let me tell you something. Can a devil get within nowhere near you? Do you hear me? You, you hear me, can a devil, uh, he won't even, the devil won't even know where you are. No, I'm telling you people, because the word of God cannot fail. God said, everything will be added to you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not interested in my life. I'm not interested in protecting me. I'm not interested in what I'm going to eat. I'm not interested in what I'm going to wear. I'm not interested in anything. But God, what is it that you want me to do? My heart's desire is to do God's business. I mean, I mean and, and, and you, that, has to, no, that has to become real to you. It has to be, I'm not talking about just, just, just muffin. It has to be real. You got to be on, that, that's, that has to be you. I, listen, I don't fret, worry about anything one way or the other. Amen. I don't have to. I don't have to because God has made me a promise and God cannot lie. Amen. God told me if I seek him first and his righteousness that all Oh, what's all? all? Anything I need, anything I want, anything I desire Jesus. will be added to me. Amen. And it will be. And it is. Because I believe that. I, I, I believe that. I, I, I believe that. I, I believe that. I don't, I don't have to. I don't, I don't have to blow my horn. I don't have to do nothing but seek God. And this is why, and, I, and I've shared this with you, particularly, I've talked, particularly I talked to, to tell this to, with the men, when we have men meet here. Men, get before you get on your face before God and forget about this world and forget about everything around you. Don't you know what the devil is doing? Don't you know how the devil is trying to distract you and keep your mind on everything else but God? And a great deal of the church right now as we speak is, is so focused on everything except the things of God. And that's why so much fear is ravish in the church. Fear, fear. is ravish in the church. 
because our minds is on everything but the promises of God. Don't tell me that you got, that you got the promises of God on your mind and you're free. No, no, don't tell me that. Don't, don't tell me that. No, this is, this is something you're going no, to you, you have to do. Amen. This is not something to talk about. This has got to be doers of my word. Amen. You're going to have to do this. Yes. You're going to have to seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. Yes. Set your mind on things above and not on things on this earth. Amen. Because all this earth is going to do is distract you and defeat you. All this earth is going to do for you is distract and defeat you yes. all in one stroke. I can assure you of that. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Amen. I tell you, don't, don't, don't tell me nothing. If it ain't about God, don't tell me. Amen. No, 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 don't, don't tell me. <laughs> I don't want to know. Now, I know, I know everybody don't agree with me, but I don't want to know. If I'm in the car with you and the news come on, I'm going to ask you to turn it off. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Because if I hear it, I got to process it. And it's taking up my mind's time. I don't need it. I don't need that. I got to defeat it. I got to go. I got to. I got to defeat that. Uh, now I got to go deal deal with that. Because the devil will use it to create thoughts for your mind. The devil will take your your wonderful six o'clock news and create enough thoughts in your mind to keep you defeated for twenty four hours. I don't want to hear it. Because I know what I know where I'm going. Know what I'm doing. I'm doing God's business, and if God needs me to know something, God will tell me. <laughs> Dear Lord, somebody called me last week. And I asked him the fact, they were saying, so what about the hurricane? I'm like, what hurricane? <laughs> no, really, I'm not, not people, I'm, being, I'm just as honest as I can be. <laughs> I got all my hurricane news from, from people. I really did. <laughs> All the, so what, where, where, where were you at? I was in my office. Yeah. <laughs> and now really, I'm, I'm, be, I'm just as honest as I can be. I'm sitting in my office, and the wind kicked about there for about an hour or so, and I never left my office. Uh -huh. And I come out in a few branches, and leaves was on the ground, on the ground but I didn't know nothing about no, no, <laughs> no. You know, somebody, somebody, my wife said, somebody called me from out of state, called me, I want to know how y'all doing up there. <laughs> I said, I don't know. <laughs> But, but, my, but my, you all understand what I'm saying. You know, you don't need to know all that stuff because all you do all you do is just get stewed and stirred up. Amen. 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 Spend as much time on the Word of God and listen to what God is saying. That's right. And you'll be able to walk in victory. No, no. You don't, you, don't, you don't need to know that. Be wise to say the devices because everything that the devil can tell you, he can use it to put thoughts into your mind to defeat you. Casting down imagination and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. It's against God. Casting it down. Jesus has provided victory for us through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so Satan's devices, they won't work for you if you know the truth, Amen. and the truth will make you free. Don't be deceived by the tricks of the devil. Mm -hmm. There's going to be more and more deceptions as times go past. There's going to be more and more tricks of the devil. But it, does, but it doesn't matter when you know the truth. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13 says, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Yeah. Evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse. Mm -hmm. There's oppositions are not going to cease coming against you. When, one th when the devil finishes with one thing, he'll, he'll have another one there waiting for you. Amen. I told you, you probably don't know what you were worrying about last Sunday. You got some healing, give you two, three loads of stuff since then. And what you, what's on your mind today won't be on that next week. You'll have something else there. You under, do you understand how this thing works? So how do you, what do you do? You set your affections on things above. That's what God said. And not on things on earth. Set your mind and make a decision. God, I want to do your business. That's all I want to do. 
I want to run your race. I want to do what you sent me on this planet to do, God. I want to do it. And with an attitude like that, then you'll be able to live and do what God, and not only that, but, but all the slack will be taken up. God will take care of everything that's needed to be done in your life. Everything. When you get up in the morning and you go before God, you seek his face, and you worship him, you don't have to worry about anything. Whatever has to be done, God will place the right answer in your mind to answer the, everything right, and you'll be complete in everything you do. You don't have to, because why are you? You are in Christ. You are in Christ. And if you're in Christ, not only are you in Christ, but God's word says so you are complete in Christ. What does that mean? There's nothing missing and there's nothing lacking. Everywhere you go, you will always have what you need, when you need, and there's as much of it as you need. Look at the life of Jesus. Just follow him. He always had everything he needed, as much of it as he wanted. And if he needed some more, he made it. Remember that time they were having a picnic? 5,000 people? They didn't have enough food for that thing. Jesus just ordered it. Yeah. Huh. God, just, come on. See, 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 we think, oh, well, now, come on. See, see, come on, folks. Are you, are you willing to believe God? Amen. Amen. I have never needed anything and didn't have it. And God, did, he gives me everything I want. He gives me everything I want. Everything I desire. I, I'm not, I just want to do God's business. Don't you understand, understand the attitude you got to have? Set your mind on things above. Get your eyes off the earth. Yes. This thing is passing away. Amen. And if you keep your eyes on it, it's going to take you with it. Amen. I just want to do God's business. Amen. I just want to do God's business. I remember Martin Luther King said that. Mm -hmm. He said, dear God, I'd like to live like anybody else. But doing God's business is more important to me than living. Dear yeah. gosh, you got to get like that. Wow. I heard him say, if, man, he got, if a man don't have something he's willing to die for, he ain't fit to live. Yeah. Man, that's powerful stuff. Yes, yes, man don't have anything he's willing to die for, he ain't fit to live, sir. Dear God. Now, see, I, see, if, see I, I want us to awake to the time that we're in. I want us to awake to the hour that we're in. This is not a time to play, play religious games. This is not a time for religious games. It's a time for us to lock into the things of God. And say, God, I'm, 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 I'm here to do your business. I'm here to do what you call me to do. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm focused on. And when you get like that, and you get up and you present yourself before God on a daily basis like that, I'm telling you, your life's going to change. You're going to start elevating you. He's going to expand you and he's going to give you some influence like you've never had before. Amen. And you're going to impact people because that's what you're here for. Amen. See, God's not willing that any person should die and go to hell. God wants everybody saved. And you know, you and I are the ones that God has placed here to impact these people's lives. Do you want anybody to end up in hell because you didn't do what you're supposed to do? Come on, how, how, are you gonna, how, are you gonna in, how are you gonna enjoy heaven if there's people in hell that there because you didn't do what you're supposed to do? Think about that. Now I know that's kind of rough. That's kind of rough. But think about it. I think, it, I think it'll be a motivator for you. How are you gonna enjoy heaven and people in hell because you didn't do what you're supposed to do? Think about that. I don't want that. That's why, God, I want to do what you tell me to do. God, I want, you to, I want to love people. I want to love people, God, and I want to tell them the truth. That's what you put me here to do. Now, here's the thing. Now, once I t love you and tell you the truth, that, my responsibility is over. See, remember that. You're not responsible for making anybody do anything. You, you're, I'm, this is my job here. My job here is not to tell you and make you do stuff. My job is to love you and tell you what Jesus said and then I go to bed. 
But I want to, I want to do that. I want, and, I want to see, and I want to see the fruits. I want to see you blossom and begin to excel and begin to blossom and live this life and begin to go tell other people about this wonderful Jesus that we serve. He's given us life through his own death, his burial, and his resurrection. Are you willing to take this message to the world Amen. and tell others about Jesus? Then bless God, let's go do it. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's, let's, let's go love people. You start by loving people. You don't just... just